next question. Hold on. Joey Coleman, member of the media. Um, can we, where, just so we know where. Paul Mallard, director of marketing. Steve Robeson, manager, uh, development planning, heritage, and design. Good <laughs> Kahuna. <laughs>
sorry, um, and designated, designed by architect William Thomas. Early occupants of the building were Archibald and Thomas C. Kerr, so it is known as the Kerr Building, who established a successful wholesale dry goods business there as early as 1848. Um, the buildings were designed by architect William Thomas, who was considered a key figure in Canadian architecture, and has designed a number of important buildings throughout uh, Hamilton, Toronto, and, uh, and other uh, cities in Ontario. The buildings are an example of Renaissance Revival architecture, dating to the pre-Confederation period, and they retain um, their original architectural features on the upper levels of their front facades, and are among very few Confederation stone commercial buildings from the Indian County. So this is what they look like today. 24 King Street East is a four-story brick building constructed in 17, 1875. Um, for James Skinner. Skinner was a crockery merchant who opened his China Palace in another location around 1850 and then moved into the subject building when it was built. Um, that business was recognized as the largest importer of crockery glassware and were the largest ship shippers to Manitoba, British Columbia, and the Northwest. Later, Linden's Labor occupied the building until the 1950s. So, so that's this building, and it was originally designed and constructed in the Victorian style, although several alterations have been undertaken, and it's in um, But it, it basically, all that's remaining on that facade is three upper level window openings on the fourth level and the corners and brackets. Um, 28 King Street East is a four-story building constructed in 1874 for William H. Glasgow and Sons to hide house a furrier business. Um, the building housed a large cold storage vault which was considered to be very advanced at the time and led to its use at, for subsequent furrier businesses. And um, so the Glasgow Company operated there until 1831, and then, as I said, a succession of other careers. And this building was also it's also built in Victorian style with a stone facade and a metal cornice. And at the time of its construction, it was the less elaborate of the. Of, there was three. There was one at 30 Street as well. Um, so it was the less elaborate of the three, but um, it has retained many more of its original features. And, uh, so all four buildings space or park are in and are integral component to the uh, park streets. So it's the four buildings or five buildings? It's so through the chair they've uh, they've merged in title because of the ownership, but there's technically anything to the four buildings. So those two four-story ones are one building? Well, they're one address, but they're two buildings. And then there's, this is considered an independent building, and then these two addresses is, is one building. On the third building, uh, former Ticat Harry Howell, and former New York Ranger Harry Howell, um, operated there later in the 50s. If there's, if there's any other questions, we'll leave them to the end and then just raise your hand. Um, the staff is of the opinion that the buildings meet the criteria for the, under Ontario Regulation 906 for designation and have sufficient cultural heritage value to warrant designation. Um, this value is vested in historical associations with the growth of commercial prosperity of Hamilton. Um, their physical design value, particularly 1822 King Street East, as having been designed by William Thomas and uh, being constructed of stone, an example of pre confederation stone commercial architecture. And their contextual associations with Gore Park and King Street 
East Street Gate. Um, so staff is recommending designation of all four buildings and rec would recommend that the description of heritage attributes include the upper portions of the front facades, um, but that the storefront levels and the rear of the buildings be mentioned in the description of heritage attributes in terms of um, controlling any adverse impacts to the, to the upper, the remaining original features of the upper facades. Front facades. So staff is, is required to consult with the Municipal Heritage Committee on the Nature and Heritage Act on any designation. And uh, that's why we are here today. Any any advice that you provide will be forwarded to Planning Committee and Council on Reconsideration of this designation. Thank you, Mina. Uh, do you have any questions? Paul? Well, you said that the demolition request is from the Chief. When was that received? Chair, I would defer to building services on that. Hello again. Hello again. Yeah. Um, the applications were received on December the 4th. December the 4th? So, uh, Chair, how does that affect designation when there's already a demolition request in place? Um, through, through the Chair Van Chair Heritage Act allows for the the word was like retracting of any approved demolition permits um, once the property becomes designated. So once the notice of intent to designate has been issued, um, but that does require the designation to go to council and be approved by council under that notice to be issued. With the, so so within, is there a time frame on that? Then, well, through the chair, we're restricted by when planning committee and council may be meeting to consider this item and then whether they approve the designation or not. Um, perhaps building services can show in the, yeah. the review period time. Uh, I want just to clarify what I understood from our last meeting was that demolition permits, if they are all correct, must be here with a request, must be, the permits must be issued within 10 days? 20, 20 working days. Oh, 20. And over the Christmas holidays, the date okay. comes out to January the 9th. Okay. And there's a 60 day period, is there not, on buildings that are identified, but not designated, where you can withhold a building permit? Uh, a demolition permit. Through the, through the chair, that's just, separate provision in the Ontario Heritage Act. It's not related to designation. It's, I guess, considered somewhat of an interim measure. But um, that part of the Act deals with including non-designated property on the register, and then there being a 60-day note okay. to notice of any intent to demolish. And, and, and I heard you say so, that the uh, yeah. You must issue the, or you can't withhold the permit, I guess is a better word, so after January, what's the date? January the 9th. Okay. And council doesn't meet again until January 23rd? That's correct. So you will be issuing this permit on the 9th then? On the 9th, if all's in place, the permit will be issued. And then should council give notice of intention as given to the applicant and to the public, as of that moment, the permit becomes null and void. Okay, so uh, we understand that. <clears throat> Once you issue the permit, you can't retract it, can you? Uh, through the chair, the, the permit in the, in the plan, the Heritage Act, the permit becomes void after council uh, gives notice of intention and it's provided to the applicant and to the public. But from January the 9th to January the 23rd, it could be demolished, couldn't it? That's what it Through the chair, that's correct. But we can, in fact, Retroactively take this thing, take that permit back. Uh, if the council wishes, after the date is the, the permit has been issued, if the demolition hasn't physically occurred. Have I got that clear? We can return to Ed. To the chair, the permit is considered void at that point, and then there is a 30-day mechanism where somebody can make an application. After the 30 days and 60 days, it kicks in. 
I think we all are at it. So we're still a little puzzled. If you, if you issue the ninth, Council on the 23rd, their wisdom says we want to designate it as a heritage building. Direct draft to go out and draft a report on that. You can then turn to the owner and say, we are pulling back that demolition permit on the 23rd or 24th, the day after. And then they would explain that 30 day part again. So, so council, presumably council will deal with the matter through the chair um, at uh, council on the 23rd. Um, the notice would then have to be published in a paper and served to the applicant that could happen fairly expeditiously. At that point, under the Ontario Heritage Act, the building permit would be considered null and void. So it has the same effect as revoking a, a demolition permit or a building permit. Um, there is then a 30-day period in which the applicant can request a review by the Conservation Review Board of the designation. So there is a, a, an appeal. Now the Conservation Review Board provides advice back to Council. Council is the ultimate decision-making body with respect to designations. Now, at the same time, if the or if the property owner wanted to pursue demolition at that point in time, he would be required to get a heritage permit uh, for demolition. And that is not a delegated approval. That is something that would have to go to council for their approval for the demolition. Okay, so the only part that's missing for me now is, is that he would appeal to this agency for demolition and review? No, that is the designation. So he, it, it's like an appeal of the designation. So council. So who who they appeal to? Is that council? The conservation review board. Is is council? No, uh, that's they? a separate body. Who is um, it? Under the Ontario Heritage Act, it's like a it's similar to the OMB, but it's not okay. it's not a decision making body the way. So it's quasi judicial, but they don't make a decision. They make a recommendation back to council. And they're a provincial agency. Yes. Okay. Thanks. So. Council. Yeah. So I just, just want to uh, go back to our meeting, uh, our last meeting, November 15th was our last meeting here, the Municipal Heritage Committee. And on uh, page four of the minutes, uh, item six, uh, there's a motion here by myself, seconded by Will Rosar, to, uh, to ask council, or in fact ask the Planning Committee, to place the uh, following properties on the registry, which would have provided the 60-day stay of execution in the case of a demolition permit. You'll note that uh, item four, five, and six, I don't know if we had the addresses entirely correct there, but that covers the, uh, the properties that are up on the screen here. Uh, I can ask uh, through you uh, what, what occurred uh, at Planning Committee with our recommendations. My understanding is that the, the for Planning Committee, they were sent to Council, and Council subsequently sent them back to the Planning Committee for further I was at council and uh, this was not discussed at council. So something must have happened at planning committee. I don't know, council for three to council Ferguson, or if you were at planning committee, yeah, what happened? Was the planning committee? Isn't on my radar? It could be something we dealt with. Yeah. So I, it, it, it appears that the planning committee had the opportunity to act on the uh, municipal heritage committee recommendations. There are several members of planning committee who sit on the municipal heritage committee. Uh, I don't sit on planning committee, and if that would have happened, then this property would have been on the registry, and uh, we wouldn't have the issue before us today. We, we would, because somebody's asked to designate it, which is fair enough, but we would have had a 60-day period. Um, so if I can just verify uh, that those details with someone who uh, would know the answer to that. Somebody at planning committee, uh, oh, Paul Michelle. <coughs> Uh, through the Chair, Councilor McCauley, um, the item um, was discussed at the Planning Committee of December 4th. Um, the item was referred back uh, to staff to have the properties um, evaluated and brought forward and, and put on, uh, presumably on the reg register, or considered for, uh, for uh, putting on the register at that point in time. So it was referred back to staff. Um, the the significance of the timing of the committee date is that December 4th is the same day that the demolition permits were received. And so, um, unfortunately, putting something on the register would not have been retroactive. And so the timing of the demolition permit, um, sort of uh, putting it on the register at that point would have rendered it moot either way because the demolition permit had already been received. Yeah, so this is this is just a 
perfect example of how screwed we are in Hamilton on the heritage side of things, cultural heritage uh, planning. It's, it's pathetic that a city of this size and this importance and this sort of history goes, to, goes through this kind of crap. Uh, and, and that a developer, in this case, uh, must have been watching this, this meeting or, or his agents or uh, whoever else uh, in the community lets them know that the recommendation is going to planning committee. He quickly runs in and issues a demolition permit uh, request and uh, staff process it as per the building code and, and what we heard at our last meeting in terms of the process that Ed has to follow on building. So, you know, there's an item on the agenda later on that I've asked to be put on there that we, uh, we need to get our act together. We're getting our butts kicked big time on, on cultural heritage and it's extremely embarrassing uh, and uh, it's, it's sad for the city of Hamilton and, and the history and heritage in this city, which is vast, as you know, and that's why you sit on this committee, you're excited about this stuff. Uh, so, uh, I, I'm just flabbergasted at uh, what has occurred. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, I have two questions. Can we ask who uh, requested it? Yes, okay. For the designation. Yeah. Uh, through the chair, um, the uh, the name of the requester is actually um, covered under um, privacy um, laws, and so we, we cannot provide that information. The contact information. Second question is: We've got a list of uh, properties that we want to designate, and they're years behind. Um, are we going to be able to deliver? And we didn't get any done this year at all. Are we going to be able to get this one done? And that's got to be the only other question. You know, we're down to one staff member. Um, just the daily functioning of that division. It's got to be a owner and a person. So, I'm just wondering if we can actually deliver. I, I don't think that's a serious question at this point we're going to deal with. The issue of the building, we can talk about the issues with other deputations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to deliver next to the whole thing. I don't know what we're going to look at properties that are going to be Actually, my next to you. Just to clarify the procedure that you described. Oh, okay. um, so, if this had been put on the register, like the list that uh, Councilor McCaddy and Will Rose are proposed at our last meeting on December the 4th. The fact that a demolition request, regardless if it was completed properly or was, I want to demolish the building, sign, whoever, two lines, the fact that it was submitted on December 4th would negate putting these on a register because we had received it. Chair, the act indicates that um, the property must be included in the register before any application is made for a permit under the building code act to demolish or remove the building. Regardless of how well that application fits the standards of the What I see before me is a nicely played piece of real estate development. What a wonderful piece of timing, December 4th. Gee, it happens to be the Burma goes through the same time as it goes to front planning committee. Now, because of this January the 23rd, was it? It's for council on January the 9th for them to accept it. That gives the Blanche Corporation a 14 day window of opportunity to get a huge backhoe and take the front up, and mind you're doing all the appropriate protecting for the area, take the whole front of the building off where there's no need to, to go for designation because it's nothing to fix, and you can take it down. What I see before me is they're coming down, there's nothing we can do about it except pass a motion to say that we request uh, that council designate, they were recommended that the council designate these buildings so that at least we made an effort. So we have a... Yeah, of course the motion to designate please welcome. Yeah, I have a question. Oh. Uh, so we've got a motion there, a question? Yeah, just
just uh, just so I'm clear, there is uh, the the owner has no restrictions between January 9th and January 23rd. They could knock down on, on the tent. That's not fair. So make me understand that. Through the chair, the yeah. application is in the process right now. And if it's all deemed to be complete on the 9th, right. they'll get a permit from that day. Yeah. Right. So on the 10th, they could not down. Yeah. Or at least through irreparable damage to it. And not be penalized. Mm -hmm. Michelle, just so we know, has, has the developer made any effort to talk with Heritage Planning? Um, through the chair, Heritage uh, Planning staff have not spoken directly to um, the owner. Has it been contact with planning staff about the project? No, we had there are no planning applications or proposals before us for for development. I think the thing we came out the meeting before was that he was make, going to make an effort to have some discussion with the planning and with Heritage. We just wanted to know if that if the, if the owner had made any effort. And, and one more question: uh, You say everything has to be in order to issue a permit on the tenth. Uh, we just experienced this with the uh, Ivanwood Stadium. You can't issue the permit until all technical things are ordered, for example, a uh, disconnection of the utilities. Uh, given the time of year, can they get the utilities disconnected by then? To the or can they do that after the demolition permit is issued? Yeah, they require the approvals for the disconnection. They have to contact gas, hydro, bell, bring us the paper back to us. And that's in place to issue the permit. That has to be done before the yes, permit is issued. Yeah. Same thing as in the stadium. So that's correct. during the holiday season, that may be difficult to get all these utilities to do that. Very true. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying it's something in this, of course, is um, to designate, um, and I will go further into, into the interiors of the this program to designate them as well. Um, couldn't uh, something of this importance go to council come to have a meeting? Talk about it. Their approval on the designation earlier than sometime emergency. I, I can tell you the plans or the clerk's office is how you have to advertise council meetings. They have you have to run into a standing committee first, which is planning meeting committee. Uh, you have to get quorums, which will be difficult because there's no meetings planned for up until the 13th, so a lot of us are going to do some vacation then. then. And, and so that could be very difficult. Uh, it's my recollection that there are still tenants in the building as they have given eviction notices for next April. Uh, do you know anything about that? Or how, does that enter into your decisions at all? Whether there are tenants in the building? Through the chair, uh, we will issue the permit to the owner of the property. Uh, they deal with your occupancies and tenancy is not what Jennifer referred to. That was the question. Thank you. Thank you. I've uh, spoken to a couple of tenants in this building, and one in particular was going to have, I don't know if still there, architecture firm. He, when it came time, to, I think I mentioned this before to everybody, to sign a lease again to renew it for another year, he was told there would be no more year leases. This is over a year ago that this happened, and that they would be month to month. That's what uh, most of the tenants there, I believe, have been told. So they could conceivably have given them a month's notice on December the 4th or January the 1st, but probably more likely December the 4th. Because they were told that they could, they could be asked to leave at any time. Seeing our architect, but way to do it. Are there any other questions, comments? Otherwise, we have a motion on the floor right now. So, would be the motion that the Hamilton Municipal Heritage Committee has been consulted regarding the heritage designation of 18 to 22 King Street East. Comma 24 King Street East, comma 28 King Street East, comma Hamilton, and recommends 18 to 22 King Street East, comma 24 King Street East, comma and 28 King Street East, comma Hamilton be designated under Part Four of the Ontario Heritage Act. Okay. So I'll give this if you want. That was seconded by Paul. All in favor? Second. Um, 28 gone. Thirty. 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 Thirty.
want to write us down? Are there any subjects or discussion items? We have an update with respect to the year end report. Um, our year end report has been, it's in the process of being consolidated, so we'll have something for the next meeting. Um, we, the education subcommittee has been looking at what our focus will be for this year's report, looking at both good news and the bad news. Uh, we're, I think we've received almost all of the chair reports now to all of our steering committees, and I just need to finalize with them. Um, I think we've got most of the details. What we need to discuss further on is just our awards. If anyone has any items they'd like to add, please let us know. And at our next meeting will be the first Wednesday of January. Um, so that'll be our next education meeting. So if anyone has anything, just email me. Um, so may I have a motion to receive this item? Just as an update. Michael, second by my paper. All in favor? Sorry, Madam Chair, just uh, I hadn't looked ahead to uh, 7.2, and I live at the Allenby Locks, uh, so I uh, need to declare a conflict and currently find myself on their uh, the condo board as well, which is I don't really want to be, but nobody else in the building wants to be either, so, <laughs> so I better uh, declare a conflict on that piece. So, uh, so that leads us into 7.2. Um, oh, 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 if there's a condo board, that building is finished, it's been developed, and the development is <coughs> done. One of the ones on this, the, the Dundas Christie High School, proposed condo redevelopment. Are we suggesting that we're going to give a record, an award for something that is yet to be completed? I think the intent of this is we're recognizing the Oaks construction for what works they have underway, or okay. have completed or underway. Um, we're not awarding the building itself. These are just projects that and that's what we did for one of the other developers that we had. When uh, uh, Dan Hurtburn was developed, uh, we didn't nominate them for award until it was just finished. In fact, we was even discussed about giving them award in the article that Paul brought up about my mother who was evicted from that building. <laughs> And it was mentioned then that the work they were doing. I had two tours we gave, and many people from the community here and the point of view came and were quite impressed. But we did nominate them. In fact, it was discussed, but I'm not, not so ready that we probably shouldn't until it was done. Yeah. Okay, well, then we, can, we can take off the understanding. This was just a reference to one of the projects that they're currently working on. Um, so we can, we can strike that. Because yeah, we have to get an award, because I already mentioned it later. Right? So I mean, it's not like we're eliminating the cause of so. No, but we're not going to recognize a project that's not completed. Again, we're, we're only recognizing that the we're recognizing a construction company, not necessarily. So, but I think we should, we should start to talk. It can be mentioned that there, this is one of the projects that we, yeah. the right here, it actually is an award that they can get for a building that's not completed. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, at our last education committee, this is information for the larger committee. Uh, I have suggested a property at 3146 Cemetery Road in Binbrook. Um, I did some investigating on that, and it would be my intention at the next education committee to have that particular property added to. Well, I think, I think what we have to do, because of the timing of when we have to get the reports done, when we have to start getting uh, owners notified and getting our awards set up, because I'll be getting the middle of February. I think whatever nominations we're doing have to be approved at this meeting. So if okay. you want to bring up, so, if there's any nominations, we're bringing them forward. I have uh, the two nominations I would like to put forward. They are 3146 Cemetery Road in Midbrook for the adapted use of a former uh, rural school. And the second is the property at 117 Wilson Street West in Ancaster. Circle like this. It's probably one of the most beautiful examples of preserved gingerbread. I drive by it frequently. I don't know who owns it, but it just seems to me that it's a standout. It's a standout. This is removed. Dr. Moon is removed. She's passed away. This was a residence. It was not a residence. A residence. She was at the corner, right? The next one short. It's the one that was removed. So I'm understanding it is designated. I'm not, I don't know that for a fact. 
But I don't think it's ever been recognized for what you see in that, that program. Yeah. Uh, I have one more. It, it, uh, this is com it's 99% complete. It actually it's the uh, First Hamilton Christian Reformed Church at Hess and Charlton. They've spent nearly two million dollars uh, on the building structure, um, and uh, it was one that needed work. It was crumbling, and uh, so the so they are having the rededication of that church in January. So technically, we go in the next year if we feel we've got a crowded field now, or it's. Uh, they're back meeting in that church after being away from it for half a year. <coughs> the church at the corner there. Church. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I was thinking, which building is that? I'm thinking, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, it would probably be good to have them be dedicated in January that we can see our own work in January. It's probably a good time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the address for that is uh, 181 Charlton Avenue, mm which -hmm. I would like to, uh, uh, do we move that these, be, that these nominations be accepted? Okay, well, um, do you want to, well, let's go through the list as is, so, because we have quite a few nominations. The, so 7.2.1 is our Heritage Property Developer Recognition Award. So that award, our nomination would be Valvasori Construction, and that would be for their project that they worked on. So maybe we can treat that as, that's, that's our very first award. Okay. Are there any discussions or any opposition to that nomination? Item number two was our Energy Conservation and Heritage Award. Last year we had a candidate that was designated property that puts solar panels on their property and they've gone through all the heritage permits. This year we don't have any projects that fall under that category, so we'll probably just do away with that award unless someone has any recommendations. Um, item number three is our education. This is a new award um, that we've created that the Education Subcommittee is proposing. It's Education and Heritage Recognition Awards. Um, we have a number of people that are coming forward that are showing some prime examples of developing heritage education in the city. Uh, well, can the question wait until just Well, no, it's quite some of those, but more than this to them. Um, so the proposed nominee, uh, nominees are Shannon Kiles, who's a professor at Mohawk College, Department of Architecture. John Aitman, who's the curator and manager of the Education Archives and the Heritage Center of Hamilton Network. And Willow Bank, School of Restoration Acts, for works that they've done on Mark. So those would be our John Aitman doesn't have an office No. No. Well, we well, didn't have an office in the No, it's not an office in the I have no idea who Shen Kyle is, and uh, Willow Bank has done, like you say, great work at Ockmar, but uh, they're not they're not a local business operation school. So uh, I'm just wondering if you can give us more information as to why they didn't even be done here. Um, in the discussions at our education committee, uh, Willow Bank has had um, work that it has done with the city. Um, it is one of the Niagara regions in southwestern Ontario's foremost uh, schools with respect to restoration. Uh, you may have to declare an interest in this one, but also uh, I think a number of the students that Walter works with have projects in Hamilton come from this particular location. And in the current absence of any such school, either at Mohawk or McMaster, we thought it was appropriate to recommend the appropriate data. And then in regards to Shannon Kyles, she's an architect, she's a professor at Mohawk. She's been a proponent for quite a number of years trying to educate students on heritage restorations. She's the one that's running the annual competition for heritage sketching. And, and uh, I think she's got, is it a show that's coming up? Eric Ballard Hamilton. It's currently at the Eric Ballard. Will Bank is all with us that's put out to uh, Walter as a student and Karen Sandberg who actually works with City Hamilton in there. It's funny. Well, she's not here, she's fine. Uh, sorry, it's a culture. So, so this is putting out a lot of people that are having a very serious effect on the, the quality of heritage in Hamilton. So I do I believe they need to be right here. Just again, yeah, no idea. And without, without the students, some of the work at Ockmar wouldn't be happening, so I think that's what we want to recognize. Stand for. Uh, just for information on Shannon Kyle, Shannon uh, has a put together website, uh, I think it's on Terror Architecture, I can't remember, or .ca. Exhaustive, exhaustive work on that website, and it's uh, 
it's worth checking out. She's done it all for summer, right? and, uh, and she's always adding to it just for a uh, buyer. I think just to explain why the committee is recommending a new award, uh, we went through last meeting and I think Councilman Tanya described our collective feeling when we talked about its frustrations with the process regarding buildings in 6.1. Um, one of the ways to be more proactive is to begin dealing with the issue of heritage from the standpoint of education. It's long term. And careers, particularly in the case of Willowbank and the Shannon Piles. She not only teaches and promotes heritage, she promotes careers in heritage. And I think the more people we have locally involved and aware, uh, the chances we have of um, being more effective in designating properties that deserve designation increases. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, so then our next, our next item is our Heritage Property Conservation Award. So these would go to property owners recognizing their hard work in maintaining. So we have 153 St. Clair Avenue. We have 518 Fruitland Road, which is Edge of Water Manor. Uh, we have 196 Wentworth Street North, which is Mission Services. 41 King Street West in Dundas, which is the Detour Concert Motors yeah. Cafe. We have 21 Ogilvy Street in Dundas, which is the Dundas Valley School of Art. 63 Cross Street in Dundas. Which one's that? I wasn't here for that one. Dave Smith and Brenda Cobb. Oh, yeah. It's not the cell The last house on the right. No, no, no. That's just the one. There's a right side of the house driving from the Okay. Did you imagine that? Alyssa, can I ask a question? I know that I've spoken with Peter, who owns the Edgewater Manor, but do these people know that they're being nominated for this? Um, I, I don't know that I'm going to do I think that's a requirement. Oh. Truly. Well, this is our recommendations for nominations. We can follow up with them. Yeah, we have not officially uh, accepted them yet. Yeah. But I hear you saying Oops. Is, is there anyone that would decline our work? Yes. Are you thinking? Oh. Yes, I think there might be some. Oh. Okay, so we can, we can review that. Um, so our last one was 63 Cross Street. Now, we now have 3146 Cemetery Road in Denver, 117 Wilson Street East in Ancaster, and the First Hamilton City Manager. Uh, yeah. First Hamilton Christian Reformed Church. Church. Christian Reformed. Um, Going back 1500. <laughs> Actually, we got to end up at the We end up at the back of the church. And they just switched properties in that old one in King Denver and King Tackle Bell. And uh, and reform went up there, west side went there. So may I have a motion to nominate these award winners? My call is seconded by Christine. All in favor? Carried. Any opposed? Saying no. Yeah, I have concerns about some of the addresses, so I, I don't think I would. Um, our next, ex next item is 7.3. It's our uh, HMHC award presentation. We haven't selected an evening yet, but it will be during Education or Heritage Week in uh, February. Usually it's the second or third week of February, so we'll get a date down. We'll also be coordinated with council and council members. Um, uh, February 23rd is the date for the presentations for local heritage awards uh, that the HHB is involved in, and that's in uh, council. Chambers on a Saturday afternoon. So I don't know if you want to coordinate that with or around that. That's not usually Saturday. Yes, Saturday afternoon. Uh, no, that was actually a discussion on that. Oh, do we? Yes. Uh, it is proposed. I I'd say proposed because some of you may have to get your passports renewed. Uh, that we use the Soldiers Memorial Hall in Denver as the site for this year's awards presentations. Well, we sound that well, Ancaster's not very central if you live in Stony Creek. I guess not. Don't give me in the middle of it. Ancaster's Stony Creek, actually. It's, it's such a nice hall. You don't think that, yes. If you can get a bus from Ancaster. 
fact, the chief building official didn't even know. He sent me an email saying everything's fine, and then uh, I guess later that day or sometime that day, in between his emails, a uh, demolition permit was uh, was launched, and we just had the same experience, obviously, earlier uh, in this meeting uh, with the uh, buildings downtown. So. Uh, I think there's, there's two things I'd like to, to, to suggest here, uh, and, I, and I met with uh, city staff, uh, municipal uh, uh, heritage planning staff after our last meeting, because I was interested in that uh, study that we've, we've had a presentation on about the downtown uh, properties that are on the list, the list of 7,000, the famous list of 7,000. Uh, a number of those properties are in the downtown core, as you, as you might expect, and we had a presentation on that uh, a while ago. And it sounds like the project is stalled at the moment. There's a staff person left or whatever, and then it's uh, stalled, and the intention is to carry on and complete the project sometime next year. But as we know, uh, as, we, as I speak, uh, someone from the development community is up on the fourth floor or something like that, lodging demolition permit requests as we speak here, no doubt. Uh, so uh, I, I think time is of the essence, is, would be my message on that. Uh, or my, my understanding of all this. Uh, so I, I don't think we can afford to wait for the completion of that study that staff are doing. Uh, so I asked about the uh, properties and uh, staff if they wish can uh, clarify the, the numbers, the actual numbers for me, but uh, as I understand it, a thousand properties were evaluated. Uh, 750 or so met uh, one of the criteria to be designated. Uh, so uh, to me, uh, and what I'll do in a mo moment is to move a motion to place all of those properties on the registry, all the 750 properties or whatever the number is. We had a quick chat, staff didn't have the information in front of them, they're going by memory. So they can give me an exact figure, but for lack of uh, having that information, I'll call it 750 properties uh, identified in that study, and we'll get the name of the study uh, so we can identify it, that met uh, one of the criteria to be designated for all those properties to be placed on the registry. And uh, so that, that would be the, the first suggestion. And I think the other the other issue that uh, drawing from the Sanford Avenue School and all the back and forth that was happening during that period of time, the comments from the school board that uh, this is old news, you guys missed, this, but missed the, uh, the boat uh, umpteen years ago or whatever the comments were. Um, I think it's important that we place all the uh, school properties that uh, are on the registry or on the list, rather, uh, we place all those school board properties on the registry, and I don't have a list of those, uh, but uh, they are there on the uh, the list of seven thousand, and uh, I think that would be wise to uh, to do as well. Of course, uh, we'll need the help, uh, Councillor Ferguson and Councillor uh, Pearson, at planning committee, because if. Uh, uh, is a history here, unfortunately, of this Municipal Heritage Committee's recommendations being ignored or tabled or still not sure what happened at the last planning committee meeting uh, in terms of the recommendations that we made last time. Uh, I, I think probably in limbo is, is uh, the non-technical term. I don't know exactly where they are from a clerk's perspective. So we need, we need some help from planning committee to, uh, to take our recommendations seriously. And I just want to state that we're, we're not talking about these properties being designated at this point in time. Uh, it's only, I, I would suggest it's only prudent planning, uh, planning in the public interest, which is what we're supposed to be all about here in the city of Hamilton. All municipalities are supposed to be about that through the Planning Act and through Municipal Act and why I'm elected is to plan in the public interest that we at least provide these properties with the opportunity to have that 60 day period Otherwise, we run into the fiasco, and I'll use that word, uh, and I can think of stronger words, uh, that we saw with Sanford Avenue School, other schools, and uh, the particular one, which I had no idea was coming this morning, or this afternoon, uh, dropped in our lap uh, a couple of moments ago. I had no idea that was coming, but it uh, perfectly illustrates uh, what I'm uh, trying to speak to. Uh, and then in addition to that, I would like to suggest uh, and I don't know if there's any appetite for this, I, I don't have the sense that there has been, uh, really a, a summit uh, organized by the cultural heritage community in Hamilton uh, to say, look, here's what's going on. Uh, we're losing properties right, left, and center. Uh, many properties we don't even know uh, the status of them, uh, and they'll uh, 
preps. Well, of course, many of them are gone on that list of 7,000. They're, they're no longer uh, uh, even around. They're even, uh, they've been knocked down or something's happened. And we can use the recent examples over the last uh, couple of months. Uh, so the question for me to Hamiltonians, to the cultural heritage community, but Hamiltonians generally is, do we care? Do we care if, uh, if the heritage of Hamilton is uh, protected? Do we care if it's lost? Uh, we know we can all make a long list, uh, particularly some of you have been in Hamilton longer than I have. Uh, the old city hall, there's, there's a long list, and, and if you're from Dundas or other areas, you'd make, you'd make a different list than I'm aware of. Uh, and uh, I think we generally, when we speak for myself, are, are tremendously saddened by the loss of those buildings and the loss of the cultural and history and, and real feel of what Hamilton was, what Dundas was, what uh, Waterdown was, uh, Glanbrook, other areas, uh, Ancaster. So the question is, do we care? Uh, does Hamilton care? Does the cultural heritage community care? Uh, and if so, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to get uh, more actively involved? Are we going to uh, do perhaps as, a, as the Naturalist Club has done on the, on the uh, natural heritage side, to do our own inventories, uh, to, to, uh, to, to come forward with perhaps hundreds of properties that should be placed on the registry, independent of the ones that I'm speaking of today that are on the downtown list? because there's another uh, umpteen thousand uh, that are still on that list that haven't been evaluated. Uh, many of them in uh, other parts of the uh, uh, Hamilton Wentworth, the uh, region of Hamilton Wentworth. So, Madam Chair, uh, I don't know, protocol of counsel, if you speak to something, you can't move a motion, but I'll do it anyways, and you can always come back to me, but my motion would be that uh, all of the, the properties that have been evaluated uh, through the uh, the city uh, downtown uh, uh, list inventory, I'll call it that, that have uh, met one of the criteria for designation, and my understanding there's 750 of those properties, excuse me, that they be added to the registry, and uh, that's part A, and part B of the motion would be that all school board properties on the list, that's the list of 7,000 or whatever the number is, be placed on the registry as well. Uh, and I think that would, uh, I, I'm hoping that uh, in light of what's happened recently, particularly today, uh, that's only prudent, only planning in the public interest to take that uh, position. So if staff would like to comment as to whether the number is 750 or 753, uh, and if there's a particular name to that study so we can understand what we're talking about uh, uh, more correctly, I would appreciate uh, that clarification. Uh, Otherwise, uh, I think people understand the intent of the motion, mm -hmm. and that would be, uh, be my motion today, Madam Chair. So, staff, do you want to comment? Well, staff, I'm the chair of the Canada Council Council. The study was referred to as the Downtown Build Heritage Inventory um, Project, and um, I don't have an exact number to, to provide right now. Um, I know the very preliminary result, results, so we haven't uh, done any quality control on those numbers. So I think that if the motion refers very generally to the downtown build heritage inventory and that meeting one criteria of the Ontario regulation is what you're looking for, then that's then we can go through and, and make sure that that data is accurate before um, compiling the list. Then that would be useful. Because as I said, the project was really at data collection and survey stage still. It hadn't gone through a systematic evaluation of those properties. So Madam Chair, I just to clarify, I was told around 750, 800 of those met one criteria. That was incorrect or I misunderstood? Through the Chair, um, the, the preliminary results when a list had been first uh, done in data collection uh, came back and it was in around the 700 area. Um, she had gone back and she was in the process of, of cleaning up some of the data, so I, I, I don't want to mislead anyone and give an exact number at this point in time until we can go back and, and, and count them. I can tell you that the original cut did come in at around 700. Um, but I, we certainly understand the intent uh, of what we're trying to do, it and um, I guess rather than having a specific number um, in, in the motion, if you would simply indicate that as long as meeting one of the criteria of the Ontario Heritage Act, we would ensure that, that all of those properties would come forward in association with, with the motion. Madam Chair, I'm fine with that wording. I'd like to add in there somewhere in brackets, uh, we understand it's 700 properties or roundabout. I, I don't want to 
coming back and it's 200 properties through some uh, yeah, stick no, handling or something like that's that? That's not so, through the chair, that's not. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, as, as to the, you, uh, Brian, you wanted to designate uh, or list all, put on registry, all school properties. Does that mean the new ones too? No, the ones that are on the uh, heritage list. That list oh, you know, the list itself, because the way you said it, it's not like all school board properties. will be on the list. Okay. No, there'll be a number of new schools and stuff. Just to, ones that would have been identified on the list of 7,000, I guess, or whatever the number was. Yeah. Well, um, my thought would be that you do all school properties of 50 years plus. That's the ones that we like to be ready. You know, they may not be on the list yet. I'd have to refer to the, the list of properties that are on inventory. Anything that's but we don't have to get into details of 50 years or plus. Or oh, so another time we should consider putting those properties on the list. Yeah. So right, right now, Council McCaddy is referring yeah. to the list of properties. Yeah. Now, I just want to uh, caution you when you, you know, um, have these broad sweeping, all encompassing resolutions without even having a list in front of you. You will run into some serious pushback when it gets to community council. Why, why is that? Why is there going to be pushback? And, 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 and uh, uh, I would rather see this come in as a notice of motion so staff can prepare their comments and prepare the list so it's on dock in front of us. And the reason I think you'll get pushback is the council spending a lot of money right now on downtown building. Whether it's a grant program, whether it's a race, a race program, whether it's <coughs> Other support or reinvestment, and, and we're starting to see some significant dividends from that. You know, big range here right now, uh, underway doing some redevelopment. It might be seen as, as putting the brakes on that, something we invest a lot of money in. So we just need to understand the consequences of it, have that before us. Otherwise, I, you know, community council may get a position that, gee, the heritage commission, a bunch of reactive people that are trying to all encompass everything. And, and, and we understand that you're passionate about heritage. We get that part. But just make sure there's factual data that you can follow and understand and see consequences of before you run ahead. And, and typically, you do this through what's called a notice of motion. So you get a warning that's coming. You stop the opportunity to think about it. Prepare the necessary list. You know, 700 properties are a lot of properties. So you put it pages. You can see where they are. <coughs> And staff can coach us on the consequences, both damage and disadvantage of doing this sort of thing. I don't know, three years again to Michelle. Uh, does that make sense to you? Or what's your opinion on the motion? I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, through the chair, um, I understand um, the concerns and um, the desire to protect properties. Um, the register is certainly not a perfect tool. It is a tool that uh, we can utilize to um, at least delay um, demolition for a certain period of time, and that, that certainly um, helps or would have helped um, in some of the situations that we've talked about, Sanford, uh, the properties on the extremes. Um, I, I think the limits of the tool is that if, if someone comes in to alter the building, then that's not something that we, we would even be in. Well, we would be informing because it would be on the register, but we wouldn't necessarily even have the ability to do anything about it. So if somebody wanted to completely alter the front facade of a building and change the windows or change the roof line or do something like that, we would know about it, but that's about all. So there, there are some, some limits to it as a, a tool uh, for protection purposes. Um, the, the benefit of the tool is, is that um, you, know, you, you do get that 60-day notice if someone intends to designate. Or, or demolish, thank you. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to consider, or for to have council consider uh, designation. And so, so that is the real advantage. I think the, the difficulty for staff is that we have, um, at this point, council direction to move forward with um, the downtown heritage inventory as a pilot project, and then move the program of citywide. Um, and what we, we, we had done the data collection, and what we were in the process of doing was um, when, when Alyssa left the city was to, to take a look at that data or start to take a look at that data to see how we wanted to use the registry. Did we want to, um, you know, put everything on it that had met the criteria just as is being suggested now? Or did we want to have a separate set of criteria that said, okay, you know what, these are, these are the properties that we really feel are valuable and 
uh, from a heritage perspective, and, and I have to explain why I'm saying that, um, that um, we really want to protect and would designate if a, if a demolition permit came in. Um, so, so trying to evaluate that, because a, a lot of the properties are, are meeting the criteria um, because of context. That's one of the, the things you have to consider under the Ontario Heritage Act. And well, by nature, the fact that very few of them have actually been relocated, a lot of them are in you know, the same context in, in which they were. And that might not be a, a property, if it's been significantly altered from a built heritage perspective, it might not be one we want to continue forward with. Um, so, so that's sort of um, where we are with the project. Um, and so the intent is to bring someone else back on it and continue with that. And then part of that process is um, council has directed us to consult with the public. Um, it, they haven't gone so far as to say that specifically property owners, but that's something that we would be doing as part of that process, um, just to inform people of what's going on, although we are not under obligation to do that. Um, and so, so that's a component that hasn't been done yet as well. I mean, um, putting them on the register, there's the opportunity, I'm fascinated, <laughs> putting them, um, there's the opportunity to, to go back and revisit them, still continue with this evaluation, but that would put timing way off because then we would be dedicated to doing something else in terms of putting them on the register and then revisiting our work later on. Um, we do have limited staff resources, that is a concern, and, and it would be difficult then to go back and start saying, okay, you know what, these properties shouldn't be on the register, maybe we should be taking them off at some point in the future. Um, so I guess the, the real concern is the existing council direction that we have to move forward on the program that we already have, as well as sort of the staff resources. Um, but, so okay, based on that, based on my concern, you're simply going to turn down the committee and come forward with a robust motion like this. I think we need to do a little more site to that if that's what the committee wants to do. And then we need to leave as a notice of motion to allow the staff to come back and tell us the pros and cons, tell us the pros and cons to allow this to go so we can make a full decision for what we can do. It's a broader discussion of being proactive. Um, I'm looking at last year's annual report in page 5. Hamilton Heritage Statistics. The number at that time was 6,779 inventory properties, of which, again, again, about uh, 25 were registered. So only 25 properties in the city have the 60-day protection. That, that's correct. That's correct. That number doesn't seem right to me. And if you're going to build a strategy, how do we start using the numbers as, as Councilor Ferguson has suggested to support what we recommend? I would think anyone, whether you're a heritage advocate or not, would be surprised that the city of Hamilton has 241 um, heritage or designated properties, 21 on a waiting list, and 25 registered. So that's approximately 300 properties in the city of over half a million with the rich heritage that we all have, or we say we have, that has some kind of protection. And that doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right to someone who came from Clanbrook that had a list of 465 registered properties that somehow they then evaporated on amalgamation. Um, so it, it just doesn't seem like these numbers are right and that we need to start looking at these numbers and what is a reasonable percentage of these numbers that should be registered and should be designated. So it's not just an emotional response to things that are happening in the community. Through the chair, um, just a, a tiny bit of clarification with respect to the numbers. There's actually 601 properties that are designated under either Part 4 or Part 5 of the Ontario Heritage Act, so we include the districts that are 601 properties. Um, with respect to the 25, I'm not sure if it's 25, so it might be a little bit higher than that. Yeah, it's about 28 or 29 now with respect to what's on the municipal register. The way that the municipality has been using the register 
is when we receive a request to designate or a request to put it on the register, we bring that request forward. So we know that there is an intent to designate these properties. We know that someone's requested it. We want to ensure that they're not demolished before we get an opportunity to go through our board program. So we've been putting them on the register, and that's how we've been using it for the most part for our process. In order to um, address the inventories, um, the inventories that were, were brought forward um, from the former municipalities um, um, in terms of their list, the register wasn't around until 2006, 2006 when they did the amendments to the Ontario Heritage Act. So, so that's part of the inventory. So that information still exists. That's part of that program where I said we're doing the downtown first and then we're going to expand citywide. We'll be reviewing all of the information, that we have, all of the legacy data that we have from all of the former municipalities to see, to then evaluate them to see whether or not we should be putting those on the registers as well as other properties that we don't know about or that didn't make it to the previous list or that may have suddenly been of a vintage now where they would they should be on a list. Um, so, so that's... That's where we are with that information. So, so with respect to the number of properties on the register, um, the approach that's currently been approved by council um, was to go through each of these lists, do the evaluation, and then come forward with a, a list of recommended properties following consultation to recommend to be included on the register. So what I'm hearing is that there is a strategy. Well, that, that was the, the first or the pilot program for that was the downtown heritage inventory. Um, which is in part what we're talking about. So that, that was, but it is, it is a longer term project that is certainly not a quick, no, I understand a quick that. winner. Quick but, but one other question. Uh, in the event of this, these <coughs> statistics from my report, we have 2,152 properties listed in the Canadian Inventory of Historic Buildings. What's the status of those properties with respect to demolition permits? Through the chair, the Canadian Inventory of Heritage Building um, was done by the, the federal government in the, in the 1970s, 80s, yeah. Um, and there is no status attributed to those properties. Um, many of them are reflected in the city's inventory, um, but uh, on their own, there is no status. So uh, I guess I would ask you if they're already included in the 6,779, why do we double count? Uh, I don't think it's a double count necessarily. That was just to highlight statistics. So we can clarify that. In the but it is confusing when you start looking at these numbers and you can question <clears throat> what status they have and you don't. So why are we even tracking them? Okay. Um, I would say that um, <coughs> we are uh, not being reactionary, we're being proactive. Uh, Couple of things we've sent, uh, you know, we spend our time sending things up uh, Sanford School and back. I don't know, I don't even know what happened to that. That went to council to try to uh, stop demolition on that and uh, just got sent back to it. I mean, uh, I went to the Ontario Heritage Conference earlier this year, which I reported to the committee here, and uh, the keynote speaker, Dr. Kellman, um, he, uh, his, his speech was on good and back, bad heritage practice. And um, so Hamilton came in as a, an example of bad heritage practice. So I would say to what Councillor McCaddy is saying, that it's true. It's it's going out, outside our community now. And this is basically a nationwide conference. And it's uh, very disheartening to, to see those sort of presentations made by keynote speakers that uh, bring our little city in the light negative way like that. So, I mean, I have no problem with what uh, Councillor McCaddy is suggesting here. I would even go further and, and talk about the education process, uh, the summit that you're talking about as well being included in that because uh, that's that's a big component. I mean, uh, all these buildings we're talking about, even especially our downtown core, you know, it's a cultural landscape. You know, when we look at these buildings, I think we need to look at all the things that happened and they're all embodied into these physical structures. Some of them aren't there yet, but, you know, right from the Aboriginal presence, we know King Street was uh, was an Indian trail, right? So, I mean, you know, we should investigate all those things and, and put them uh, as significant features into our, our built heritage. As far as um, uh, 
uh, people power to do these sort of things. Uh, you know, I could I could talk to facilitate uh, through the school. There's the schools growing all the time. It's not a big, you know, from my understanding. I, I'm not minimizing. You know, it's, you're doing professional work there on designations, but uh, <coughs> through a learning exercise, it wouldn't cost the, the city anything, and um, you could bring students to find a significant feature in every uh, every heritage uh, property, both property or landscape. It's not, a, in my opinion, it's not a big. Uh, Process to get uh, significant features in order to designate. As far as designation goes, there are some issues with having volunteers do those designation reports because they're going forward for fair designations. I think it was something that we need to discuss. Wasn't the committee back when Black Act weren't they very involved with that? The, uh, and, there, and there were issues with those here, those reasons for designation. It's, it's something that we have to get with Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I have a question. The staff time required to get a property on the registry is significantly different than getting it designated. Yes? Yes. Um, so if we had an agenda to move significant properties onto the registry, then we wouldn't in the public view be seen as reactionary because that property likely, if it were a demolition firm that came in, would already be on that registry, looking forward down the road. Does that, does that make sense? Okay, I have another question. Sorry, yes? can you clarify that, sir? I'm sorry. If, if our goal here was to start requesting that significant properties in all the communities of the City of Hamilton get moved on to the registry, that's less staff time, and it makes it gives us 60 days whenever you know developer A, B, or C wants to apply for demolition permit. So that's an attempt to avoid reactionary moves by our community. Yes. Okay. My, my other kind of following through with that, is it possible that we create heritage districts out of some of these 750 properties such that the district may have, be more inclusive of the variances of the properties? It might, would it be less staff time to have a district as opposed to through the chair, um, districts are fairly costly to do and they take a fair bit of time, but one of the things that we were looking at um, in doing the downtown heritage inventory as part of our overall evaluation was to determine whether or not there were specific areas that would be better protected or appropriately protected under Part 5 of the Heritage Act for a district plan rather than individual designations. So that was something that we were considering as well. Um, there's also nothing to prevent you from being individually designated and designated as part of the district. You can be holding now as well. Thank you. So I, I just wanted to clarify a point uh, through you to Councillor Ferguson. I will try and I, I mean, give it one shot. And I, we've had lots of discussions in the past, and I respect Councillor Ferguson immensely, as he knows. Uh, the important difference between the registry and designations, right? Uh, having a property on the registry provides 60 days should a demolition permit process uh, or permit be uh, requested. 60 days to evaluate whether that property is significant or not. And, and, and to me, I, I'm a planner, so maybe that's my problem. I, I just like process. I like I like things to to have a flow because the alternative, and we, we we've had a beautiful example of it this just at noon today. Uh, is that the demolition permit is requested under the cover of night? I'll use that, you know, being facetious, right? Uh, and uh, as issued uh, within the X number of days, um, as Ed is required to do as the chief building official. And there's no real consideration. It's, it's just a, it's just a race. Uh, the developer smells something in the works. He gets in there and puts a demolition permit in place. The alternative, with properties being placed on the registry is there's a 60-day period. So in this case, 
the, if, if, if this property was already on the registry, the property's on King Street, and he submitted his uh, application on uh, whatever it was, uh, December 4th. December 4th. Then we've got until February 4th uh, to uh, to respond and look at it. So in the worst case scenario, if council decides to not to designate, I guess that would be, staff says, yeah, it's significant, it should be designated. Uh, planning committee says, we don't think so. Or, and then and then the developer can move ahead on his, on his demolition and, and his, uh, he hasn't even submitted any planning applications yet, but maybe you would do that after that, you would assume. That 60 days also provides an opportunity to talk talk to the developer about alternatives, right? You know what, tell you what, can't we just work together here? You know what, what, what if you do this? Um, you, you know, he'd show you the building and you go, boy, you know, you're right, you can demolish that building, there's nothing left. Uh, but these three over here are, are significant or whatever. So I'm just trying to understand, and maybe I can ask for you to, Councillor Ferguson, with, with that 60 day period, uh, being the being the, the real implication in terms of a planning, uh, in terms of the, the developer or the property owner being slowed down, uh, to use that phrase, just try and understand why that's a problem. The problem I see is that I think you want this community to have integrity. They want it to be seen as being responsible and fair. And I don't think you can do that yet. It's in my experience in my six years on council, and something comes in that's put together quickly without the correct amount of staff consultation or the staff document to back up what you're thinking, you're just going to hit a wall. And, and so the right thing, I'm not saying it's wrong, I just say let's get it right. And, and, and the best way to get it right is get the staff report. I like to see the some of names, addresses. See, one jumps out of me. I think I suspect all of you would like to see it. I know the committee would probably like to see it too before we just jump ahead and do this. And and so we're talking the next meeting, just do a notice of motion. The motion is taken away by staff, the prepare a report, the motion is brought back to us in the next meeting, and we can debate it and vote on it that time. Okay, now I'm trying to spoil the time, I'm taking too much time here. Is, uh, we have, as a committee, uh, sat with integrity and watched buildings drop before us. So we have integrity, but the, but the heritage buildings in Hamilton don't have integrity because they've been demolished. Uh, and, and that's where we're headed. Uh, so if, if we take a notice of motion, this is a, a dead simple motion. This work is already underway. We know these buildings are significant enough to put on the registry. We're not telling people that they should be designated tomorrow. That would be a radical move, okay? Uh, to me, the real radical move is not to take those properties that we already know are significant, have a level of significance, and give them the 60 days. They've stood for how many years now? Why not give them 60 days? And there's nothing that I'm talking about that is radical or hard to understand uh, from, a, from a planning in the public interest perspective. And uh, I'm just beside myself because I, I just don't want to take another 60, 90, six months and watch a number of other properties uh, as the demolition permits uh, trot past us on their way to being uh, implemented. I just don't want to be part of that process. And just as a point of clarification, the motion that, that we're going to be discussing, um, if it clarifies what exactly it needs to be on the register, that what the implications are that for yeah, council. I just put a word in the Kirk would tell us, I heard Michelle say that council's already provided direction to staff what to do. Will the council need a two thirds majority vote? No, we said that. That's not the case. Well, I'm Michelle, I'm please, you, you, you've, actually, you've actually done the, the direction was to do the study. It wasn't anything about the registry or what to do with the study or anything. So we're just playing games on that. So please, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Because that's game playing. That's not fair. Well, I'm just trying to play with the rules. I'm asking the perfect questions in the uh, You heard Michelle's response that we have a plan. And the plan is to run a pilot in downtown, I think I heard Michelle say. And if I come back to this, if this committee recommendation goes to the committee and open council, the council needed a two thirds majority. Or do you want to investigate that? The initial response would be uh, no, the, the work being done is being now proposed to use in a different light than what was originally. So it's, it's, the research base is still there. 
it's Councilman Caddy, and my interpretation at this point is that he's seeking that that information be used in a different manner. So the direction is, it's, it's, it's seems appropriate, but there's a number of other concerns that have been But it seems like that body of work could be used in order to execute what this motion is genuinely asking. It sounds like you think that would be not positive, so you may want to check with Rose and the meeting adjourns and get confirmation on that before this committee. Uh, that would be good. positive. Thank you. Uh, a question about the properties that we discussed under item 6.1. That all was in the news in the last couple of weeks. Um, let's assume that the building permits issued that sometime between the 9th of January and the 23rd of January, um, the buildings are demolished. What's going to be happening on that property? So we're, the question is we don't know because this developer hasn't even submitted anything in terms of what he plans to do. He's used the news to talk about it. So we're going to have big bots. I mean, parking lots. You don't think you can do that, right? Not legally, but they do. Okay. So you're going to have vacant lots. So what's the rush? Other than to accomplish what? Somebody wants to do and not have any quote unquote red tape. It just doesn't seem right to me that we have this urgency attached to the demolition permit, and conceivably nothing could happen to that property for years. And there we are, sitting right downtown from Gore Park with the light for how many more years? This doesn't seem right. I got that some motions, but it just doesn't seem right in the process. It doesn't seem right that there's so much urgency, yet then there's, hey, we're demolishing Ironwood Stadium, and I know City Council has issues with what the, the plans were. So why are we demolishing? If we haven't got an approved or a city approved plan for that space, it doesn't seem right. Yeah. I understand, uh, councillors and planners, I mean, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but this byline states that you have six months yet to demolish a building to start building something else. This is not true. Yes, you're correct. Yeah. Yeah. Six months. Okay. And if you don't, you're, you're subject to a fine. And that, that bylaw apparently was passed when the building decided to let the work out. Right? Yeah, through, through the chair, uh, and it's too bad the lake service isn't, isn't here, but um, that only applies to residential properties. So, where there's a loss of residential units, then they have a year to rebuild. Yeah. So, it's not about. No, well, you couldn't. Well, you have too many examples of the Well, he was fine. The one in the parking lot you're talking about. It was but it can't be used as a parking lot. Can't, so use it. can't use it as a parking lot. Yeah. They could put a shop up on the property and that would still qualify. Oh, okay. that's unfortunate. Through the, through the chair, if there were residential units in the buildings that we've been discussing, then there, there could be an issue. With that. Well, there, there are some, or were some. There were some, there were some people with that. If uh, what's being said is true, that those buildings can be demolished and not keep anything there for theoretically years, I thought part of the demolition issue process involved uh, having a plan in the So yeah, we asked that question last meeting directly to the building guys here, and they said so there's no kind of required. The only stipulation is something about a parking lot can't be uh, put on site, yeah. which is bizarre. Why is it going to be a lot of So I think we've, we've, discussed, we've discussed this quite thoroughly. Um, right now we have a motion that's been put forward by Councilor Caddy just to just actually to mediate any sort of issues. I would ask that. What Councillor McCaddy is suggesting, maybe someone else put forward that motion. Uh, you mentioned about some issues later on for your discussion purposes at Council. Sure. Um, if that's okay with you, Councillor McCaddy. Right. You want somebody else put forward the motion? Well, uh, did, did you say you have you, you may have issues later on when we go to Council? 
Well, it's certainly an issue, but I... Oh, no, just to go with discussion, because you put forth that person discussion. Here's your show. Or is it your school? I spoke to him, yeah. So you can now come back to me as a, back to him, as a new speaker oh, to move the motion. So yeah, we've got so a motion on the table. The only thing I would suggest is do we need clarification as to what the registry actually entails. So okay, it's, it's, it's only 60 back. days. So. No, that was just, just making sure that council knows what it is that we're actually asking for. It's not designation, it's simply getting the properties on the registry and what that means. So we'll, have to, we'll have to be explained to council, uh, uh, to, to planning committee rather. I'll, I'll try and be at the meeting. Maybe city staff will want to. I'm not sure what city staff will say. No idea. So we have a motion on the table. Do we have a second motion? Okay, sure. Yep. So what I have, and please feel free to correct me, Council McKenna, uh, is that, that the properties, and obviously there will be some uh, formalization of the registry. I'll find out what the correct terminology is for that. So uh, that the properties identified in downtown heritage build, uh, downtown building heritage inventory that meet one of the uh, criteria identified, and in brackets approximately 700, as per the motion, uh, for a designation uh, in the Ontario Heritage Act be added to the registry. I hope I've detailed that correctly. That's part A. Part A, yeah, and then the part B, if you could read that part. for me, that would be That's, fantastic. Yeah, so part B would be that all school board properties uh, on the on the list, and again, there may be a, a better name for that. So the city's inventory of buildings of architectural and or historical interest. On on that list, uh, be uh, be placed on the registry. Okay. Okay. Could these two items be treated separately as two separate motions? Or yes. should they? Well, they, they are. It's, it's uh, planning committee, for example, could would vote on A and they would vote on B. So but you could vote against vote. something. In terms of our vote. Oh, certainly. Yeah. yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, we're the same as planning Anybody committee. Anybody can right? request that. Okay. Motion is stop. Motion is Second by Kathy. All in favor. Do you want to do A and B? Is that was that yeah, that's, that's what we, we can do the A and B. So A, A, uh, so A opposed. So who opposed? Any What you have before you is um, the program details, and this gentleman is, is looking at creating this new program, and what he's looking for is just a letter of support from our committee. Um, this is something that we can uh, just help them, and what he'll do with that letter is then put it forward through for his program planning, and just to show that there's rights for it. My son is a third year carpentry apprentice, and I had him look at this. This is a fabulous opportunity for someone in his position because he can't afford a little Masonry, uh, ironwork, uh, all, all the 
various other things as well. And this is more of a carpentry course. Just the naming of it is the issue I have. It's a heritage of like carpentry. Yeah. I, had, I had actually asked him or mentioned to him that he could come and speak with us and that he was welcome. So the invitation has been sent out to him. Uh, he had thought just for now that he was fine. So he could be invite him again. And what I'll do, I'll mention to him, do you have any suggestions as to um, just more of an understanding of what uh, they're going to or what they're thinking of. It. Are they, in fact, going to be full blown, blown uh, you know, masonry and um, drawing and plaster and cornice and things like that? You know, um, cultural landscape theory. I don't know. Like heritage restoration covers, you know, it's, it's pretty broad. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's the title. Um, it's more, but it's a little bit. Yes, I think it's a wonderful initiative. Um, I just need a clarification though. It's a postgraduate certificate. Um, I'm not familiar with, with that kind of qualification. Does this mean could you clarify that? There, there is no trade uh, licensing for uh, heritage conservation. Uh, the physical part of it mm -hmm. that I'm aware of, you're not under any building license trade. Really. So Different. this is to formalize a, a trade? Uh, I don't know. know. Is it to a formal certification program? Okay. I can't okay. speak to that. I'm wondering if the small details really aren't necessarily our concern. It's the general intent of, in you know, principle, what the support is. Yeah. Yes. Would there be any issues in us writing a, a letter yeah. just based on that? As well, can the offer be on an advisory committee form? Uh, well, I think maybe maybe what we do is if we've got yes. suggestions for alternate, like we, you know, the, the name of the course maybe might be tweaked a little bit. We want to offer the fact that some of our community members are interested in helping further if he needs to be. We can do a general and a separate. With him. Mm -hmm. He's just looking mainly for a letter just for this so he can start and get some programming support. Yeah, sounds good. <coughs> I move that uh, we, ex we uh, offer this gentleman as much support as we can possibly get and give him a letter of support to start. Mm -hmm. All right, so. It's just, it's just a question on that. As much support as possible we can, does that mean he's going to be asking us to do for one of them? No. <laughs> Non-monetary. Uh, so we put it in the PS, don't ask for money. Okay. <laughs> We're all smart. You just want to send with people upstairs that you know, got support from the community. So we, we just we support this program. Well, we can't work in any business as much as we can. Yeah, but don't come back to council. Your heritage committee says you should give us everything you can. So we can't get pounds. So we'll be writing a nicely worded letter. Second by Mike. All in favor? Carried. Any opposed? Seeing none. Or you just have to wait for the stand. No hands. We're now on to we're now on to item eight, which are buildings and landscapes. Eight point one. We have item eight is off market house. Unless it unless it fell down since I saw it last, it's like pretty sad. Probably the same. Tibbling. I do believe it's another movie shoot, and I had heard absolutely nothing about any progress unless you know that the architecture firm was asked earlier to do some work. You're still doing it? Uh, I think everyone is still deeply employed. I have been there in a while. But, <laughs> but uh, I, think, I think progress is still being made slowly. This is slow. See how progress. They're getting the development plan before they hastily do anything. Uh, Andrew Sloss House, well, Grove Valley, thank you, Central Union, surrounding the landscape. Uh, through the chair, I'd like to put forward a motion to move uh, those up to. Sorry, are they on the endangered list already? Yes, yeah, I'm right. Leave it there, okay. 
No, uh, nothing other than um, the rapidly deteriorating century manner. It's a change. But in reference to the policy, have we formally changed? Do you have a comment in regards to the yeah, yeah. Have we uh, formally heard from St. Joe's, et cetera, as to what's happening exactly, the protocol, the issues that we enter, et cetera? They have no jurisdiction. Okay, then, Ontario land. Sorry? Ontario land. Infrastructure Ontario. <coughs> it's Whoever. changed, yes. The name keeps changing. I don't know. Never, but we haven't had a report on those properties for a while. So I think, I think Megan can help. I ask through the, through the chair, the committee, we have a call that um, through the development approvals process, the site plan approval, um, there were requirements for the buildings to be documented prior to demolition and, um, and, and any salvage of any features that have been reused um, in the landscape or, or however they end up doing it. So that part of it is still outstanding. Um, it's still a condition of the development approval. And uh, that will be addressed by students on the end of the year. Um, I'm trying to remember when the new hospital was supposed to build the, uh, be open, but essentially they were looking to demolish those buildings until the new hospital was operational and they were doing the rest of the site work. So, so accepting Century Manor. And Century Manor, sorry, Century Manor is outside of the yeah. St. Joe's lands and it is it is owned by um, Infrastructure Ontario. Mm -hmm. and, um, my understanding is there will be a plan for the redevelopment of that other side of the, of the property, and that will be public, um, you know, probably in the new year. Thank you. The they're both different. Yes, through the chair it was understood through the approvals that they would be demolished, but there was certain mitigation measures that we wanted to see undertaken prior to that occurring. So they're protected on the site plan right now. There's a little circle around them saying these cannot be demolished until they meet such as a criteria, but they will What is the criteria? Well, documentation. Documentation. That's all it's Okay, that's one's early. Uh, the report I have is what I sent to everybody and closed on the Stony Creek Historical Society news site. That's most of it. Well, they had a sing song two weeks ago. Oh. 60, 60 people were there. They had hot cider and apparently it was freezing cold. I was like triple booked that day, so I didn't make it, but very successful. Oh, great. Where did they put 60 people? In the drive shed. <laughs> Squished. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm certainly impressed with the uh, speed at which they seem to be progressing and getting that building done. Uh, I watched much of that close to the dismantling of, I guess, which is the elevator housing on top of the west wing that they maintained. First they took the bricks and then I took them out, but just I was wondering how far they go and they seem to have stopped. So I guess it was just taken out of that house. And they've removed much of the east side where they're going to be attaching the new building once they build that. But they're just going to zoom. I wish all of our construction was. Mr. Stinson should go over there and yeah. get a lesson from him. Oh. Um, with respect to the federal building project, it is under site plan control. There has been um, applications for development in various phases. Um, and the, the portion to deal with the heritage building is in, and um, there's a heritage impact assessment that will be reviewed by policy and design. So it in January. Um, Beach Canale House, Kathy? No meeting until the new year. Uh, Charlton Hall? Oh. Hey, well, Charlton Hall is a rather interesting. Uh, there's a good article in Hamilton magazine by Joey Coleman about it. And uh, apparently, through that, I discovered that the city is going to spend a quarter million dollars to bring it up to some standard. Mm -hmm. Last time we read it about it, Mr. McKay was going to tear it down. I just wonder if those, since it's a designated building, no, it's a building on Registered. the designation list. Registered. Oh, sorry, is this is the, you know, the lighthouse itself? No, oh, Charles. Charles. Oh, Charles. Oh, sorry. Because of that, we won't do a heritage. Okay. 
um, in uh, talking to the school board around Sanford School, they had an expression interest in actually having somebody from the school board uh, involved in uh, what other, whatever committee there might be. That, uh, yeah, I think that's a wonderful question. So, yeah. you know, if you had the right person on that, uh, from the board on that committee, if they were willing to be uh, forthright, then uh, mm -hmm. uh, that would be a good deal. And Meg, do you know if there's been any discussion of salvage portions of the well, um, I think, the Chair, I would have to check again, but um, when I spoke to the, the person from uh, Recreation back when this first came up, I think in April or earlier this year, um, there was seemed to be some indication that the RFP for the demolition included a documentation report, but I, I have to confirm that it's just something that's in my memory. But, but I wonder if part of our recommendation, not only documentation, but where the potential for salvage is. Yeah. Heritage components, I think, could be used. Even off site, there's something. Uh, the education archives may really want something to. Yeah, sir, I don't, through the chair, I don't, I don't know if we could require it, because there's oh, no more formal process, but we just probably suggested it if there was a site visit to work in the document, and that may be the opportunity to do that. I'm not sure if we would need this. It would have any impact, but. Um, just just through the chair and just for purposes of clarification, um, certainly even as heritage staff, we're, we're able to go and document buildings from the street. As far as um, going internal to the building, we would have to be invited. There would have to be clearance from the owner to allow us to go in. Um, so that's something that would have to be, um, be provided at some point in time if we can facilitate the visit. Okay, so Stanford. Um. Through you, listen to, to Paul, maybe to the chair, uh, or maybe to the staff. Is there any plan at all in for anything foreseeable that will keep some of those elements in the school and any new development there? Like any kind of. Uh, if there is, I haven't heard of any. The, the plan at this point is just to knock the school down. There's no money in place from the council to build a, an extension to the recreation center. It's just knocked it down. Which, and, and that's part of the frustrating part that uh, the urgency to knock that building down is, is not clear at all. But, uh, it's to stop people from stopping. Okay. Well, yeah, I went to a press report I heard it's now a hazmat building in total safety. Uh, it has no material. It's full of asbestos and everything. You can go into a night board stack without uh, hazmat uh, coats and everything. I, I don't know. Yeah. I walked through and I'm here to tell it to you. Unless you're disturbing the asbestos. Yeah, actually, I'm going to get rid of it. Don't stop touching it or anything. Well, it looked beautiful. Can you send them later to suggest the building that you want to build? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to get permission from you. Yeah, Generally, uh, the board has their own man to do that. Uh, John Aiken, for instance, he documented the, uh, the headquarters. They would, they would probably, if they're going to do that, they probably want their own guy to do it. Yes. Okay. I was just going to say, John Aiken's right there, the curator and manager. So we just tell him, you want so your award, pal? You better get <laughs> exactly. it. No, 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 no. Not again. <laughs> He's not a res restoration carpenter or a or So if Walter could hook up with him and suggest that these windows are rare, I like that. And uh, just to suggest that if you can I this will take a feature of the building. Just my, my intention would be to do some drawings of I, I hope to find some windows that I can sort of look inside and do some drawings of it, drawings of, of the components. Well, that'd be great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, John, John is a very accommodating person. Yeah. Yeah. My, my uh, neighbor is uh, Jim Simmons, the chair of the school board. So I will put a little word in his ear and see if he can facilitate if you want. So I think as, as, as a committee, our motion is, is just for documentation. Yeah. yeah. Any, any other things that happen past that? So Walter put forward the motion to, re uh, to request documentation of the building prior to the motion. Is that fine? Second. 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 Second
Seconded by Juan. All in favor? Period. Any opposed? So we'll just we'll just this go right now. I'm sorry, I got yeah, page and yeah. I have and my promise is I promise I'll answer your page in five minutes or less. Okay. So I have to do it. Merry Christmas, Mike. Yeah. Bye bye. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, the, the work on Smith's is cool, maybe it's weather related, I don't know, but it's, it hasn't stopped, but it certainly has slowed down. Um, as I mentioned last time, the uh, I told Megan about it, all of the windows have been removed, and there's no action. I do, I do know somebody has been uh, approached about putting in new windows, uh, and apparently that they do not have a permit. But I've seen no further work, so the windows are boarded up, only partially they're open at the bottom of some of them. And I'm not seeing the number of uh, vehicles with workers around the building. Some, but not like I did. And there's certainly no sound of, of heavy equipment, which I was hearing before. Um, is there any other stuff? Well, uh, Mike, you have to Yes, Chair, I have received a document or specifications for the new windows that are proposed, and uh, we'll be reviewing those and, and hopefully issuing a heritage permit. So I'd like to the chair to ask if they're retaining the uh, frames of the original wind sash frame. Uh, through the chair, the, the, the frame with the brick mold and the, the actual the yeah, the frame sash. is being retained, but none of the uh, sash is on. Well, not going to retain so My understanding was that they were going to thermal upgrade the uh, last the existing. That's what I was told. That's, 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 that's okay. So that that's not the case then. I mean, it flipped uh, it flip flop flopped in the earlier stages of this uh, between that and replacement, and then um, with the heritage permit that was application that was never complete that was submitted a few months ago was a complete replacement, and that was reviewed by the heritage permit review section. Our next item is Delta High School. Politics. Okay. Uh, James Street Baptist. Okay. Uh, Lister Building, Council McKenney. Uh, Trouble Hall, Michael. I'm sorry? Trouble Hall. Trouble Hall, it's still there. It's not very much going on. Uh, it Tom looks great, though, for those of you who haven't taken the time to walk down to see the colors. It's kind of nice. Uh, Thomas Bullen. There was something in the news there. The developer is planning on building something on that property. I think, and, and, and with the intent of reusing the facade. Yeah. He did mention that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they understand. Yeah. With, with high rise. They have every, yeah, have every intention to put it back on the I think it's, it's, it's a condo, it's a condo in residential. Yeah. Uh, does there anything else, Dan? Yeah. St. Mark's? Yeah. Uh, Ockmar? Uh, I think Walter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're just finishing up the, uh, the roof work there, the chimney work, uh, barge board, uh, painting, and uh, slowly starting that place slowly. It's coming together. Makes sense. Tapping on something, Joe, but it's kind of understanding that RFP going out in February to just get interest from the private sector if we're taking it over. Ron, you're going to buy one then. We'll give it to you. We'll give it to you. Westdale Theater. Brian, Brian here, but just, but just on that point, uh, Brian and I have taken the tour and have explained yeah, to us one of the big so issues there is switching the projector from film to digital and whether that was a cost that the owner was prepared to make. Um, news this week that the theaters in downtown Burlington had closed down for that very reason that they weren't prepared to make. So, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, the last one's all seen through the channel. Our next item is item 9, and we'll work through these pretty quickly. Running out of time, do we have any nominations for the Volunteer Service Awards program? We have the correspondence from the Ministry of Citizenship and Information. Any nominations for this award? If none, may I have a motion just to receive this item? Michael, seconded by Joel. All in favor? Carried. Um, we now have correspondence respecting heritage features within the city limits for inclusion in the Heritage River inventory for the Grand River Watershed. <coughs> Um, would anyone have any contributions to this? Uh, just to clarify, if, if this comes up in discussion with staff, uh, the Glenbrook Heritage 
Secret Society has received this request twice and responded twice. That, to our knowledge, there is nothing in the land that comes close to the Grand River Conservation Authority. In fact, it's a whole different watershed. So if we push back on that, that's what we are concluding. Can somebody explain to me what this means? Yeah. pictures are taken from the bus, but everywhere I went it was, we have that, we have that, and so I, when I came away from there, I thought my first thought was, what they've done is they've made their old, um, what, what was old, they've made beautiful. So this, the, the entire original part of the city is um, a historic district. Um, the, um, these are buildings that they've restored. This was, I believe, an original waterworks building. This is the view outside of the dining room of the brand new hotel. It, the hotel is an um, a, a outlet mall. There's some casino, and I'm not, I'm not making an opinion either way. I'm just saying they built this right beside the old steel mill and they think this is the old Bethlehem Hotel uh, looks kind of cannot like to me this is a new development and in the background you can see the steel stacks they've done a really good job of blending it all this is the old one of the old um, sheds where the steel was stored and they made a theater out of it an outdoor theater um, and the property is now called steel stacks they have, um, this is an old house that's made into a funeral home. Um, they've, they use the property for um, beer, um, Oktoberfest beer festivals. They have, this is the hotel, the new hotel, built right beside the old steel building. Is that the hotel you stayed in? Yes. The hotel. This is the Masonic. It's the hotel, part of the restored building. The hotel is brand new, but it's made to kind of blend. This this building has been reused. It's all old. It's all office buildings now, and it was a mill. This is a building that they're about to restore. They have a drama and art school in some of the old buildings. This is one of the houses in the heritage district. This is the new part where all the condos and all the property managers are making all their money, but this is the steel stacks in behind that they're retaining, and that's, that's their scape, that's their, you know, the view that they have. So they kind of accepted their heritage as opposed to kind of get angry with it and, and abandon it. They should have fake-colored fake smoke coming out of the chimneys just to maintain the ambiance. Thanks, Michael. 
Um, this is the original waterworks, the valley where all the waterworks, the water was processed in the original. Um, it's another house in the Heritage District. This, the wall they retained here, it looks a little precarious actually because it's just kind of freestanding, but this was the um, old original inn and they've restored it and it's now a museum. It's a, a much smaller town than ours. Sorry, I love HVAC stuff, so I've got all this stuff in here, but this is the hotel from coming into the city with the, um, the old strip mill over here. This is the label, the new um, signage for going into the steel property, and back here is where they've renovated into a, a theater and the art school. It just, it just made a lot of sense to me because it's so much like what we are and where we've been. It's just kind of food for thought. To add to this, uh, last Friday I was in Toronto at the Stillery District. It's fantastic. It's not uh, one of Toronto's better parts of town a few years ago. 44 buildings renovated in some cases, but mainly restored and repurposed. They now have a two-week Christmas crafts festival sponsored by loans that takes place in the district and around the streets of the district, which are all pedestrian streets. Uh, attended on average by 10,000 people a day. Maybe on a smaller scale, there are some old industrial properties in this city that might have a purpose such as Bethlehem or downtown. Lots of beer there? Yes. That's how it is beer. There's actually a brewery on site. Yeah, the mills are still stocked on tap and we're trying to rip over. There's a company that makes it, the place that makes and sells socks. So, Kathy, you were inspired? I was. I was. It was. It was. It was truly inspirational. They just, they haven't tried to change or abandon everything, they just accepted it and incorporated it. It's lovely. We could actually make a contribution to the realism of the site by shipping them some coal tar and have to put it in the pond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, <that's fine. laughs> Kathy, you say, you say old lady, or, so that means that you were the young one. You were the I youngest. Was. I love going on there because I am the youngest. It's great. Right. Nine point four. Uh, oh, we may have a motion just to receive Kathy. Question on that, though, through to Steve. Steve, is, is the probe company all legal now? Uh, no. The uh, decision of the Justice of the Peace was to defer making a decision until I think they had, it was a one year deferral from the date. That's what the email says. That's no, right. they just deferred making a decision uh, on the motion to dismiss the charges. That's my understanding. So, as it stands right now, Okay. No decision was made by the justice and the. So they, so they, we didn't lose, as you said in his email. That was nobody won, nobody lost. It was so basically all the, after hearing all of the evidence, the uh, the justice just said no, deferred it for a year on the understanding that the city was working on a broader strategy dealing with the cultural and the arts so sector. It's probably not appropriate that we still advance or reward for this. It's not legal yet. Sorry. So just as you have a point, I got yeah. verification from Steve. Right. Well, well, I can. I've got the. I've got the decision right here. It's uh, it's pretty clear that um, again, it sounds like you're you're looking at a narrow interpretation of this decision here. Um, who, Gordon? Steve Robichaud, manager of development, planning, and heritage. Okay, Steve. Um, oh, actually, according to Justice Casey here, it says here um, during the course of the hearing, among other things, I'm not going to read the whole thing here. She does say uh, the, the prosecution of the city is proceeding on the light of the law, however, the court's concerned is with the spirit of the law. Understand that the prosecution submission that commercial taxation does not relate to the uses of the building, but with greatest respect, I feel the average person would link the fact that the building being taxed commercially at a higher rate that house, than housing means that it should be able to deal in commerce. She talks about uh, healthy neighborhoods where the sort of thing, Mr. St. Jude, she was here. And I, I don't know him. I, I just met him a couple of weeks ago, I should say, because uh, I took this as a heritage matter, so I took it upon myself to find out what was going on here. 
Um, so going back to what Justice Casey says here, uh, you know, she talked about how the city of Hamilton uh, is studying, they have a study to create healthy neighborhoods. Um, it's just the thing that Mr. Sanchucci is doing. Exactly the same thing, to take away an established use of this building and what may be determined in the future to be a building designated for this purpose seems to the court to be fundamentally unfair at this time. Mr. Santucci, in essence, is trying to preserve what may be a cultural improvement to the area as a whole. So, so we know what we're talking about. He's in a place where I'd go to work down with Keith and John Steele years ago, and every time I'd go by there, I'd see prostitutes and, and drug people right in the corner of the street. And so this, as I said, uh, yeah, I went and met with Mr. Santucci, and I saw his building, and he's just trying to have uh, performance arts in there and bring some of the greatest acts. And I just learned this in the last two weeks from, from all across Canada there. Um, and, and as far as stewardship goes, I went through his building and, and all the material is, is remained in there, although a lot of it disconnected. But he's got the heaters, he's got the original fire lines. He's even, although he's replaced the window, he's even saved the original windows. I saw them in the basement. So in terms of stewardship, Conservation. <laughs> I don't know anyone, and it's not. I don't think it's designated, is it? Um, is it's a listed or listed interest. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I don't think there's any necessary uh, uh, permits to go through to to, no. to stipulate to, to do any of the work that he's done. He's just done it on his own accord. So sorry, I, I have to interject on that matter. Any change in use in the city of Hamilton for any building, whether even if you were retail to another retail use, it does trigger the need for a change in use permit, which is a building permit. So that is one thing that is required for any property owner when they are buying a property and they're looking at changing the use. So if you're on Lock Street and say if you were a restaurant and you want to go to a retail store, that would trigger a change in use permit. So you do need a building permit. No building permits were applied for, nor were any building permits issued because the zoning doesn't permit the use. Well, my point was just to clarify with. The Justice of the Peace did not issue a decision. They, they laid out some thoughts and then they said they're going to give it a year, they're going to defer making a decision on the understanding that the city was dealing with this arts and cultural sector and that they were going to try to come up with a strategy. So I didn't say that anyone, that, and I said nobody won, nobody lost, as far as it goes, it's, they just deferred making a decision while council deals with this matter. I, I, need, I need a motion to that from this Tell Mr. Santucci to speak. Just briefly. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll second. I'd like to speak. I need, I need someone to first answer my call. I'll second by Walter. Oh, all in favor? Any opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Coming today has uh, been a revelation to me, first of all, about what, you know, you, know, you must be, you have to be commended as a group because I consider you the Forlorn, forlorn Hope Brigade that charges into the bre breach. It's, uh, it's a and what I've heard here today reiterates what a dismal failure we are as a city in protecting our heritage. Um, I wish to withdraw my request on that basis, and I, I'm just going to go on my merry way and do what I do. And uh, ultimately, we decided in the courts that it was, and the judgment will be presented. So thank you for at least uh, putting it back on the agenda and allowing me to have this moment. Thank you. But my thinking is that once the legal matters are resolved, there's no reason whatsoever that the road can't be Basically, in, in 
2013, sometime or from early 2014, having a, um, a group where they want some involvement from local heritage. So basically, this is just requesting to see if anyone has any interest in being added to the list for correspondence. And what they want to do is, if, if they get together a list of interested parties, individuals, groups, uh, they can then go forward to for funding and program planning. So. If nothing is set, they're just looking to see if there's any individuals that are interested. So what we can do is if there's... 2015, no. <laughs> yeah. That could be... So what, what, we, what we're thinking we might do is if anyone's interested, if you could just let Christopher know, and then Christopher will forward on the, the information, and then you can make contact individually with... Uh, Motion to receive. Oh, yeah. Paul, seconded by Michael. All in favor? Right. Comments? Well, I just did uh, one thing on understanding business. Uh, item D, the copy bill, uh, that's something that was initiated back in March 15th. They have uh, new owners to that building now. It might be a good idea to nail that designation down. Do the new owner who's the owner? Got to come down somewhere. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do, are we close to. Uh, Getting that one properly designated? Through the chair, I believe where we left it was that we would talk to the owners. So now we will talk to the new owners um, just to meet get a sense of, of how they feel about the designation. And then, um, My sense was that it was really was designated with some little technicality that. There was that, a technique, and I'm trying to remember exactly what it means. I think the feeling was that if they were supportive of it, we could probably just pass the bylaw and call it. But if it was something where we might be facing some opposition, then we might have to go back and start the whole thing oh, okay. to, to okay. tidy it all up. So you can check the more? Through the chair, in the, in the interim, I believe the notice of uh, designation is actually published. Published? Oh. Published. So there, um, I believe um, the opinion we received back from the was that there was some interim protection for that building, given the fact that the notice was published, even though the bylaw was passed. So next step is talking to these managers. Well, the new business, you know, you spoke earlier about the, uh, about getting the designation done for, uh, for downtown Kingsbury, which I'm going to refer to later. As to, you know, is our staff going to be able to get that this done in time to come in light of the fact that we haven't got anything done this year? Through the chair, we would, we would follow a, a much less uh, involved process. We would be just proposing reasons for designation or the description of heritage attributes. We wouldn't be necessarily going through the full cultural heritage assessment that we normally go through. Um, just in light of the circumstances. So it's a it's an expedited process. So it's kind of the focus that you get when you get back in January. Yeah. You're closed tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So early in January. When when do you return in January for uh, it? Uh, through the chair the office is open again on the second. Well, I think it's a matter of good business, so it's inappropriate, I'll shut up, but um, I'd like to put a motion. We're on time. Uh, we're over 20 minutes, another two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to propose that we start the process of designating the former home of Lieutenant Governor Lincoln Alexander. Uh, the home is located on Proctor. On the Boulevard. I'm going to get into the number here. <laughs> this property was owned by the Alexanders for approximately 45 to 50 years. Uh, so its cultural significance is there. Uh, but I think it's also a good example of a, an era of housing in Hamilton as well. So I do not have the number of the property, but I'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. So uh, can we have that as an item to come forward for January? As yeah. long as someone else is here to present the motion, that's the only oh, thing. That's right. That's right. Wow. Okay. Well, I have to have someone else. Yeah. Well, I won't be here. Oh, okay. <laughs> In Florida. That's right. So, motion to adjourn. Do you have anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
We have an open house Stony Creek Historical Society for our archives on January the 19th. It's at, I never remember the name of that church, but the city now owns it, just before Fruitland Road on Highway Number 8, on the left-hand side, uh, Stony Creek Historical Society offices. It's our archives and library. And I'm so proud to say that we have Billy Green's sword, his drum, and his pants on display. <laughs> it's not his pen. Not his pen. Can you send it? Is there an invitation that's been sent out? Uh -huh. I will make sure everybody gets that. Thanks. Are you inviting James over? Sure. Everybody. Inclusive. So last thing is, Merry Christmas, everyone. Have a happy New Year. Our, oh. So our next our next meeting is January 17th in this room. Motion to adjourn. Happy, seconded by Stan. All in favor? Yay! <laughs>